Hi, this is Tom from DBMS Consulting, and I'd like to spend a couple of minutes uh, giving an overview of a project that we're working on for, uh, as a result of uh, an RFQ from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, they were looking for an, uh, an LMS system, which is a learning management system, that would allow um, mobile access as well as traditional browser access, and, and also uh, a level one and a level two uh, Kirkpatrick uh, evaluations um, process. So to do this, what we did is we um, did a custom implementation of the open source Moodle software. And I'm just going to run through a couple of the features. Uh, this is, Moodle is, if you're familiar with it, is an, it's a huge, huge package that um, provides a, a, just a ton of functionality. Um, so um, this is going to be your, just scratching the surface. Um, when the user <coughs> logs in, they come into the, um, or prior to logging in, when they go to the, the landing page at um, wellbeing.clinicalhosting.com, they'll, they'll get a list of the courses. This is the default Moodle behavior. Um, this can be changed so that, the, that you have to have an account to see the available courses, but the way that the default behavior works is that any courses that, that, that are available are listed. And then the user, whether or not they have an account, is taken to uh, a, a, an administration page where they can either put in their, their credentials if they already have an account, or it makes it easier for them to set up a new account. New account. It's also uh, very easy for to administer um, one of these systems because users can be uh, uploaded in bulk. And what Moodle does is it will assign um, a temporary um, system generated password then the first time that the user goes into the system and logs in then they they're forced to change it and the, the password complexity rules can be uh, pretty much as is uh, as complex or as simple as is is required um, these are pretty standard I think one one up or one lower and one special character and an eight character minimum so I already have an account uh, set up Use my test account here, and I'm going to log in. Also, um, <coughs> login's done through HTTPS, so this is an SSL site. And we see that there's one uh, one option for enrollment, and that's the self-enrolled. You could also uh, manually go in and enroll everybody into a class. Uh, when you set up a user, you could have them all enrolled in one. Um, and there's other ways of doing it too. There's um, we can tie into to PayPal or to um, other other um, uh, credit card processing um, systems, so that if it's a pay service, that the user can will then be charged, and then once that transaction is complete and the verification code comes back from the uh, credit card processing company, uh, then the user would be able to, to to log in or to enroll. So, <coughs> so these are all. Uh, uh, self-enrollment courses that we have set up here so I'm going to go into this one here and this is one we're just calling health one and what's happening is the user is getting enrolled right now there are um, four or five different modules uh, that are turned on for this this um, this specific course is uh, this uh, personal health inventory which is a, a questionnaire uh, a news form which is this general news and announcements this is a uh, administration uh, form so to to send out uh, teacher or uh, course instructor uh, posts. It's not. It's not used for um, generally used for two-way uh, discussions. There, that that is done in the uh, in the discussion, which I have labeled as Health One discussion. But this would be if there's um, maybe a cast. Uh, if if you're using this in conjunction with uh, with a, a, a classroom, maybe if there was a postponement or a cancellation, or if there was a quiz coming up, or Let's say new new materials were being made available. Um, this is where you would post things like that. That there wouldn't be um, uh, it wouldn't be something that came out of the the uh, the, the, the students, but it, but it would be from either an administrator or from the instructor. Um, there is also, and I'll just um, just give you a quick look at what that is. Uh, pretty standard posting. You can um, sort them and do a couple of different things and see how you want them displayed. Um, I just put this one here if, if um, the people would, could uh, if 
there was a, a potential study group, maybe people could put ideas in here that he, uh, if they had access to to posting in here. So other maybe other administrators or other teachers or um, and a, an instructor can give other people the ability to to um, to post in, in, in into forms like this. So if there's a teacher's aide or uh, or TA or, or if there's a student leading a group, then they could have access to do this. Um, I put one um, standard HTML page in here. Um, you can put all types of content, um, SCORM packages. Um, they can be developed as, as complex as is as, uh, as required um, for the type of um, uh, co training and content that you want to provide. This is a standard, um, just flat HTML page that, with some graphics that came out of the documentation that was um, provided with the RFQ. Um, it could be used as, as a supplement to the class, or it could be um, the uh, the text itself of the class if you didn't need to have something um, as complex as a SCORM package, for example. But you could also put um, other types of media in here also. This is a discussion that I t just spoke about. Um, any user that uh, is enrolled in the course can go through and just add some at a post and then people can reply to that just like any any standard um, posting um, where it's 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 branched so that people can comment on a specific topic there's also the ability to put together workshops um, this one hasn't been set up yet but it, I included it because I want to show that there is uh, a workflow aspect to this so that um, the the students can submit their work. They can then have an assessment, have a grading evaluation, and then at the at the end of that, it's closed. And you could set multiple workshops up so that uh, for different milestones. So if you were to cover um, different topics within one course, um, you could break it up like that so that um, it would be a nice, clean way to to um, to compartmentalize the um, the process. This, um, everything within the system is broken down by dates so that uh, you can add specific things to specific uh, time frames. So for example, if I go back to this uh, current course, you can see that the things I was just showing you were all general to the entire course. But you could put, you could add within, within here. Now, it's not letting me do that because I'm logged in as a as a user, uh, as a you know, student or um, client, but as an administrator, you could go in here and you could say, within pick a date range and then add something specifically for that date range, so that after that date range, or outside of that range, it would it would not be available. So if there was um, a, a video that was sp specific for that time frame or um, any other a SCORM package, any other type of uh, content. A quiz. Uh, if they had to take a quiz at a certain time, and that could all be done, grouping it by these dates. There's also the standard um, <coughs> standard search forms that you can uh, that you can um, you can go through. And once you have a, a, a functioning system, um, that's helpful if you need to get some clarification or if a student's searching for uh, uh, topic a specific topic and they want to get some more information about it or maybe look if somebody else had posted some some work up there uh, to cross-reference um, for that type of thing um, news events so as you use and these are all these are all very um, <coughs> uh, customizable so you can choose you know what you can choose what you want on your front page and um, just to to, to make it as, uh, as clean as, as, and as um, productive as, as the user would like it to be. I think that's all I'm going to show in this session here. As we add more um, functionality to this, uh, we're going to build on this. Uh, we'll be creating some additional, um, additional videos. So until then, if you have any questions at all, um, please feel free to contact uh, clinicalserver.com um, and you can have any questions regarding LMS or uh, any of the other projects that DBMS Consulting is working on um, get your answers there thanks for listening